Hey guys, this is Test 39, Game 3. This is the Pole Children game, who are left-handed and right-handed. It's an ordering game. We know this because we have seven years, 1990 through 1996, and we have the idea of years being consecutive listed in the rules. We have before and after in the rules. Now, I've laid out a bunch of stuff here, but don't worry, I'm going to explain all of that. We have that no two left-handed children are born in consecutive years, so no LL and no RR because they tell us in the next rule, no two right-handed children are born in consecutive years. We know that S is left-handed and born before U, although we don't know U's right-handed or left-handedness at this moment. We know that a left-handed child is on 91. U is right-handed on 1993, so they actually do end up telling us that about U. Then they tell us that Z is before both T and W. We got that there. And that's all the rules here. Now, because no two lefties are consecutive and no two righties are consecutive, we know that 1992 must actually be empty with no people at all because n neither lefties nor righties could go on 92. We also know that we have to have an SL before U. So for this reason, we can infer that that S will have to go on 1991. There's nowhere else that it could appear. Can't go on 90 because then we'd have two lefties consecutive. Now, this is a pretty bare-bones initial setup for the game. If you wanted to jump into the game having only this, that'd be fine. However, there are actually a few significant inferences that you can make here. We know that we've got to have Z before both T and W, and there aren't too many places that those guys can go. I mean, that's three people out of a total of four remaining empty slots, 90, 94, 95, 96. So if Z was on 90, T and W would have to go on 94, 96, if Z was on 94, we know in t that T and W would have to go on 95 and 96 in particular, and there is no difference in the rules between T and W. They are essentially interchangeable. So I'd recommend making two different main diagrams, one with Z on 1990, the other with Z on 1994, and consider those to be the two main diagrams for the game. So I've set up these two different main diagrams here. On the top diagram, if Z is on 90, W and T are forced to be on 94, 96, due to the numbers of lefties and righties. Z is going to have to be a righty on the top diagram. Can't be a lefty because lefties are not consecutive. Now, we've got two R's and one L so far. So we've already used up our two righties in the game. We've got a lefty on 91, two lefties remain. One of them will go on 94, the other will go on 96, and 95 will have nobody at all. Because remember, of course, we have five people, seven years, two years, we're not gonna have a person. On the bottom diagram where Z is 94, of course, T and W are forced onto 95 and 96. Z will be a lefty because righties can't be consecutive and there's a righty on 93, forcing 95 to be a righty and 96 to be a lefty. And then 90, of course, will have to be empty. We've already used up all the people. So these are our two main diagrams for the game containing every single possibility in the game. And we can now go on to the questions. So question number 12 is a general orientation question just take one rule or inference at a time and apply that to all five choices looking for violations. So we know that, you know, 92 is always empty, whether it's the top diagram or the bottom diagram. There is never anybody there. So any choice mentioning a person on 92 is unacceptable and can be eliminated as a result. So A has Z on 92. That's eliminated. C has U on 92. That can also be eliminated. Now, we know that Z has to go before both T and W, so any choice where that doesn't happen is automatically bad. Choice B, as in Bravo, has Z on 95, but T earlier than it, so for that reason, B is gone. We know that U is always going to be on 93, so we could have eliminated C for that, but we already got it on something else, so we're good there. We know there have to be three lefties and two righties, so we can use this information to help us now as we check between D and E. Now, of course, the difficult thing is that these choices only refer to the people, not to the specific variables. So for that reason, we have to kind of read between the lines a little bit using our two main diagrams here. We know that Z will either be on 90 or 94. So looking between D and E, they both have Z on 90. Therefore, the top diagram is the one that is relevant to us. And we see in this diagram that we have to have one of TW on 94, the other on 96. In this particular diagram where Z is on 90, we cannot have W and T on both 94 and 95 
94, 95 is empty in this diagram because of the three lefties, two righties restriction. So D is violating this by having W on 95, unacceptable, D is gone, leaving E by elimination for number 12. Number 13, if S is before Z, of course that does not happen in the top diagram. So the bottom diagram is the one that is relevant to us. They're asking us what cannot be true. Could W be lefty? Yeah, of course, he could be either one, A is gone. Could Z be lefty? Yes, in fact, Z must be lefty in this diagram, so B is gone. Must, you know, could we, uh, is it possible to have T before W? Yes, they are interchangeable, so because it's possible C is gone. Could we have U after Z, meaning Z before U? No, we cannot. We specifically have U before Z occurring. Therefore, D is impossible, and is our answer for number 13, because they're asking for cannot. I'll look at E, though, saying that 1990 is blank. Of course, it is blank. That could be true. In fact, it must be true. So E is gone, leaving D for 13. Next, number 14, what must be false? So four of the choices could be true. One of them cannot be true. Could we have 90 and 92 both blank? Yes, that happens in the bottom diagram. So for that reason, A is eliminated. Could we have 92 and 95 both blank? Yes, that happens in the top diagram. So B is eliminated. Could we have 94 and 96 both blank? No, that never happens. In fact, neither of those things is ever blank. So for that reason, C is impossible and is our answer for number 14. I will look at the rest though. Could we have a person in 90 and another person in 93? Yeah, that happens in the top diagram. We could have a Z on 90 and U on 93, that works. So that could happen and it's gone. And then could we have a person on 93, another on 95? Yes, that happens in the bottom diagram. We have U on 93 and then one of TW on 95. So E is gone, leaving C if you didn't get it before. Next, number 15, if T is born after W. Of course, that could happen in either diagram. So in the bottom diagram, of course, if T was after W, we'd have W95, T96, so we've got one right there. In the top diagram, we could have T after W, meaning W94, T96, and in either of those cases, everything's fully determined. So in my tally here, I've got two different possibilities because the ordering of this game is almost completely determined. There are only two possibilities within each scenario, depending upon the ordering of T and W. So generally speaking, in the main diagrams, global, global perspective, we see four possibilities total. 15 is reducing it to two possibilities. So 2B is our answer for 15. Number 16, if nobody was in 95. So we're eliminating the bottom possibility as irrelevant since it has somebody on 95. We're looking only at the top possibility right now. What must be true in this possibility? T94, no, W and T are interchangeable. Same for B. W94, we could have T on 94 instead. So those are gone. W96, of course, we could have T96 instead, so C is gone. Must we have Z on 90? Yes, we and must. That is not negotiable. It's definitely there. So D is our answer. I will look at E, though. Z94, no, of course, that was the bottom possibility that we eliminated. So E is gone leaving D for 16. Next, number 17, if T is right-handed. So in the bottom possibility, that's the only one that's relevant really, because in the top possibility, T is definitely going to be a lefty. So for that reason, top possibility is irrelevant. We're focusing specifically on the bottom one here. And in this bottom scenario, T being a righty means T's on 95, forcing W to 96 being a lefty. So must be false except, meaning four of these things cannot be true, one could. Could we have T96? No, we cannot. That's impossible. Therefore, A is eliminated. W95, could that happen? No, W is 96, so that's gone. Could we have U exactly three years before T? No, U is exactly two years before T, not three. That's impossible, so C is gone. Could we have Z exactly one year before T? Yes, we could. In fact, we must. Therefore, this doesn't have to be false. It could be true. In fact, it must be true. So for that reason, D is our answer to 17. I will look at E though. W is a righty. No, W is specifically a lefty, so E must be false. Cannot be true. That's gone, leaving D by elimination if you didn't get it before. Next, number 18, if Z is before U. So the top, the top possibility is the relevant one. The bottom one is not because it has U before Z there. So we're only using the top here. Must be false means could be true, except four of these things could be the case one cannot be the case. So 
Could we have 92 blank? Yes, in fact, we must, so A is gone. Could we have 95 blank? Yes, in fact, we must, so B is gone. Could we have T as a lefty? Yeah, that's totally possible. W and T are interchangeable, and either way, they will both be lefties. So C is gone. Z as a lefty? No, Z is specifically a righty. That's impossible, therefore D is our answer for 18. I will look at E though. W lefty? Of course, that is a must be true, not a must be false. So E is gone, leaving D for 18 if you didn't get it before.